Okay, hi, so welcome to this video where we're going to speak about fighting disease, right? In this video, we're going to talk about how we keep pathogens out, right? That's what we call the first line of defense. And we're also going to touch on the immune system as well and how the immune system kicks in when those pathogens actually get into our body. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos where I do cover pathogens and I cover different types of infectious disease or communicable disease, please have a look at that first because I'm assuming in this video that you understand all of the content in those all right so firstly we're going to have a look at our defense systems right our defense systems now when we say defense system we're talking about a method by which we stop pathogens from getting into our body right we have the defense system and then we have our immune system Okay, the immune system is how we deal with it after the pathogen has got into our body. The defense system is trying to stop that happening in the first place. All right, now we have different components uh, to our body or our defense, which aim to stop pathogens getting in. The first one being our skin, right? Our skin is actually a very, very effective defense. Okay, it stops things from getting into our body, right? So the skin does not allow pathogens to pass from our environment through into our tissues, organs, and blood, right? So that's very important. Also, if you think about it, if we had a load of bacteria on our skin, we could end up having moldy skin and the skin would start breaking down, uh, but that doesn't really normally happen. What our skin actually does is the skin also releases antibacterial slash antimicrobial chemicals which can kill pathogens. Right, the reason I've said antimicrobial is because some of those pathogens might not be bacteria, they may be fungi, etc, etc. All right, so that's all good. But now think about different parts of your body where pathogens could potentially get through, okay? If we think we have different orifices where um, we need to be able to exchange things uh, to the environment. One major example being through our mouth and through our nose, right? Our airways. We need to be able to breathe in and breathe out. Obviously, pathogens can be president, uh, president, sorry present in the air and so when we breathe in we could be breathing in those pathogens as well so there are more defensive mechanisms that we have those being hair and mucus lining the airways okay for example the nose okay the mucus yep is sticky and traps pathogens and obviously your hair is where the mucus will be and so it allows the mucus to stay there rather than just sliding out because if we had no hair in our nose for example the mucus may just come out that's what a runny nose is really um, but the hair allows mucus to stay there when you don't have a cold that is and so that means that any pathogens coming in are going to be trapped in the mucus and then we can get rid of them now if a pathogen makes it past uh, the mouth or the nose what we have is mucus is also secreted by the trachea and the bronchi. Yep, you should know if you uh, if you haven't seen um, my video on the lungs, then please go and have a look at that because you should know what the trachea and the bronchi are. Well, they secrete mucus as well. So any pathogens that have um, managed to get past the mucus in your nose and your mouth uh, can get stuck in the mucus in your trachea and your bronchi. Okay, now these also have very tiny hair-like structures, but we don't call them hairs, right? We call them cilia. Okay, so very small hair, or we could just call them small hairs, but they are, you know, they're not really strictly hairs. Okay, so small hairs line the trachea and bronchi called cilia, right? So these small hairs are called cilia. Okay. Now, the cilia, they basically waft the mucus right to the back of your throat. Okay, So the cilia will waft or push the mucus to the back of our throat where it can be swallowed. 
right? So if you ever feel that you've got a load of phlegm at the back of your throat and you swallow it and gets rid of it, that's what the cilia are doing. They're wafting that mucus to the back of your throat. When it's there and you swallow it, it will go elsewhere. It will actually go into the stomach like everything else that you swallow. Okay, and you might be thinking, well, why does it do that? If we want to get rid of these pathogens, why do we want them in our stomach? Okay, so in the stomach, hydrochloric acid, chlor, sorry, hydrochloric acid, there we go, finally got there. Hydrochloric acid is produced. Okay, this is stomach acid. So when you hear the word, the term stomach acid, it's actually hydrochloric acid that is produced in the stomach, right? So that's produced, which will kill pathogens present in the stomach, right? The pH here is really low. Most pathogens cannot survive at that pH, just like us as human beings wouldn't survive at that pH, right? If that pH was everywhere, our blood, for example, is just around pH 7.4, right? It's just above pH 7. Now the stomach acid may be around pH 2. That's way, way too low um, for us to survive. Same thing with these pathogens. They can't survive and so they get killed in the stomach. So those pathogens that have made it in, they've made it past the mucus in your nose or your mouth. Uh, they've, they've been trapped eventually in the mucus uh, in your trachea or your bronchi, wafted to your throat, you swallow them, and then they've ended up in the stomach. And then bad for them, they get basically dissolved by this acid, kills them. Okay, so that's great. Loads and loads of pathogens we'll take in, right? Very often we actually breathe in a pathogen, okay? But we don't know about it because we actually don't get ill, okay? This defense system is actually very good. It's very effective. Any pathogens that come in, a lot of the time, what will happen is that they will be stuck and we either get rid of them, we cough them, we spit them out, or we swallow, we swallow sorry, the mucus, uh, which ends up in the stomach. Or they just land on your skin, and your skin will deal with them, and they just don't get through, right? However, some pathogens do get through, and then the defense systems obviously don't work anymore. Then we need to turn to our immune system in order to deal with those pathogens. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at next. That is the immune system. Okay, so the immune system all right now straight away you can see a diagram here this is actually a white blood cell okay so the immune system heavily involves our white blood cells right you know if you've looked at my previous videos we've got two types of blood cells in general our red blood cells where their job is to carry things around the body, including oxygen, carbon dioxide, and our white blood cells, which have a major role in the immune system. And this is what we're talking about now. Now the white blood cells actually do multiple things. If you look more in depth, there are different types of white blood cells which do different things. Okay, the first thing that they can actually do is engulf pathogens. Okay, by engulf, that's just a fancy scientific way of saying it eats them. Right, basically the white blood cells can take in the pathogen, digest them, so basically eat them, break them down, and then they are now harmless. Right, so the white blood cells, uh, here we go, white blood cells, very cold so my typing is terrible at the moment, can engulf, engulf, there we go, pathogens, rendering them harmless. Okay, now this process has an even fancier scientific name, okay, is called phagocytosis, right? You might wonder why it's called phagocytosis. A lot of the time I find myself seeing these strange looking science words and thinking, well, where does that come from? Because a lot of the time it is logical. Well, because these white blood cells, okay, the white blood cells that engulf pathogens are actually called phagocytes. Okay, phagocytes. So the phagocytes carry out phagocytosis, which is engulfing a pathogen. Okay, so the next thing that white blood cells do, because they don't just engulf pathogens, is they produce things, you will have heard of these probably, called antibodies. All right, let's just scroll down here. So white blood cells also produce 
antibodies. Now, you might be wondering what antibodies are. You will have heard of them, but a lot of people are confused about what they actually are. Right now, what an antibody is, is it's actually a protein that is produced by white blood cells, which can go and recognize specific pathogens. Okay, now I'm going to draw a diagram here to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So let's say our pathogen was a bacterial cell, right? Blah, 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 blah. This is bacteria, etc., etc., etc. Now, all pathogens, or all cells actually, but we're just talking about pathogens here, have specific markers on their cell membrane, which basically act as identifiers, right? It's almost like the fingerprint for us. Yep, and those things are called antigens, or we call them antigens. Let's say that this triangle thing here, because it could be any shape, right, is the antigen for this particular pathogen. Yep, that basically identifies this pathogen. Right, this is called the antigen. The antigen. And all pathogens have these. Yep. What white blood cells do is they're able to recognize. Let me draw that. So the white blood cell here drawn in blue. Okay, it might look something like this. That's actually a nucleus. Blah blah blah. Okay, now the white blood cell is able to recognize that antigen. Okay. And what it will produce then are proteins called antibodies, okay, antibodies. And these antibodies look something like this. You'll see them often as Y shapes, okay. Obviously, if you were to actually zoom in, they're a bit more complex than just that. But different antibodies recognize specific antigens. And let's say this antigen is recognized by this antibody, okay. That means that that white blood cell has recognized this pathogen by its antigen, okay? Antibodies are produced as a result. Now, there are a couple of things that antibodies can do, but the main thing that they do is they basically label this pathogen as saying this thing is foreign, okay? It doesn't belong in the body. Yep, so, so the antibodies stick to it. Our antibodies don't stick to our own cells, okay? If they stuck to our own cells, then uh, our immune system would start killing our own cells okay basically what can happen then is one of these guys one of the phagocytes can come and recognize that there's an antibody and it will and it will do uh, just that what it's meant to do which is phagocytosis okay it'll engulf that pathogen okay those antibodies are extremely important now importantly after that has happened okay so after uh, a white blood cell has recognized a pathogen, yep, via the antigen. We have an immunological memory of that particular antigen and therefore the pathogen that it belongs to. Okay, if that pathogen infects us again we can produce antibodies, antibodies, antibodies far quicker and thus kill the pathogen before developing symptoms. All right, this is when you are known to be immune to a certain condition or disease, right? You're basically at a point where you remember the antigen on the pathogen, you will produce antibodies quick enough that you can eliminate that pathogen before the pathogen has caused you damage, right? And it's all because those antibodies recognize the antigen which identifies that pathogen. Okay, and lastly, something that's very related is a specific type of antibody called an antitoxin, right? Sometimes, rather than producing, oh, sorry, rather than having this antigen, which all of these pathogens have what they do is they produce toxins and so if this pathogen started releasing a toxin okay that toxin might have this square shape okay this is all illustrative obviously they're really more complex what a white blood cell can do is recognize that and produce specific antibodies which are called antitoxins which go and neutralize those toxins so these red squares would actually cause us damage if they were allowed to go and affect whatever they were going to affect. But our immune system or our white blood cells produce 
specific antibodies, right, which might be the right shape. And you see that these ones, okay, they look like they could fit a square in them. And I'll just draw one like this. Yep. They basically are neutralizing these toxins. So these toxins can now not go and affect us. Uh, and that is a specific type of antibody called an antitoxin, right? So this here is the toxin, which is going to go and be toxic to us. And these are called antitoxins. And they neutralize those toxins and therefore stop them from causing us damage. All right. So I think that's about enough for this video. So I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> Excuse me. As usual, please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out. But if you do still have questions on anything covered in this video, feel free to post them in the box below or send me a direct email using the link in the description. But as usual, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.